All right, the Trump arraignment, a hot topic for his Republican competition, but only one of them showed up in support of Donald Trump down in Florida today. That's Vivek Ramaswamy, and he joins us right now live and in person. Vivek, good to see you. It's good to see um, you. You know, you, you just heard Andy McCarthy a second ago talk about it's so hard for other candidates to get traction when Donald Trump absorbs all the oxygen. You were down in Florida today showing support. I don't know if it's for Donald Trump, but it's it's in opposition to this rogue FBI, rogue DOJ and rogue Joe Biden. That's exactly right. I mean, my top priority as president, if I'm elected, is to shut down the corrupt administrative state. And there's no better example of that corruption at work than in this politicized indictment of Donald Trump. And so if I'm to wear my old legal scholar hat and actually get into the specifics of that indictment, there are a lot of selective omissions of both fact and law that make this thing smack of politicization. So that's why I took the next steps of saying that, you know what, you don't have to wait till the election to start leading. I filed a FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act demand of the Biden administration and the DOJ to get to the bottom of what Biden told Garland and what Merrick Garland told Jack Smith. That's the question that the mainstream news media should be asking. They're not asking the questions. And in some ways, it's shameful that I, as a competitor of Donald Trump in this election, have to actually ask questions that much of the mainstream news media didn't ask. But for me, this is actually just another example of why I'm in this race. If you want to think about it, if we had solved that problem of the administrative police state, Donald Trump wouldn't be going through what he's going through now. Mm -hmm. It's actually a good reminder that we actually need to go further and solve the problem. But the American people are thinking about the corruption within government, yeah. in the Department of Justice, within the FBI, just the bloat, yes. if you will, from their perspective. I call it the, a return to freedom and returning those sacred freedoms granted yeah. to everyone in the Bill of Rights. But also what's most on their mind is the economy and inflation and prices. People would need a gain in wages of 16 percent just to keep up with inflation since Joe Biden took office. And what Andy McCarthy is really hitting on is the, the getting the message out on the issues. Yep. And while there, the, the central issue is President Trump's legal problems. Well, I think that this is an embodiment of one of the issues. So let's talk about the administrative state. Let's talk about the FBI. Long before Trump was indicted on either of the cases, I had actually called for shutting down the FBI. Why? At the local level, you have local police and local prosecutors. You don't have a bureaucracy that sits in between. At the federal level, you have U.S. Marshals and you have the DOJ. That has its issues. But when you have a giant agency like the FBI that sits in between, that's a formula for corruption. Same FBI that went after Martin Luther King, blackmailed him to commit suicide, now going after different political opponents. So in many ways, I was talking about these issues long before Trump faced it. This is a reminder that those are some of the issues we face. Now, Dagan, you touch on a different point, which is economic growth. I am the pro-growth candidate in this race. I think that actually economic growth is our way out. But one of the levers that we need to pull to deliver that growth is actually, you guessed it, pair that administrative state back again. That's the wet blanket on the economy as well. And so when I'm looking at January 2033, when I leave office, if I'm elected after two terms, if we have three branches of government rather than four, not only does that restore the constitutional republic, it's also the single greatest ingredient to unlock the economy. And I'm in this to do both. No, I want to go back to this, to, to what you did today for um, going down to Florida with Donald Trump. And I go, I, I think you have a campaign that's set up where it's like, it's not about me. It's, it's about America. And it's not about Donald Trump today. It's about America. And I'm disappointed that every single presidential candidate didn't join you in Florida to say this is not about Trump. Yeah. This is about us fighting for our country, not our campaigns. We're not in opposition today with Donald Trump. We're pro-American today. And that more people didn't join you on the camp from the campaign trail to go, we're all going to stand together today. I was a little disappointed by that as well, but you don't complain about others. You do your That's part. Well, well and it's not Trump first or Vivek first. Right. It's America first. Yeah. That's what we stand for. And I, I will say this. It would be more convenient for me and the other candidates in this race. Let's just call out the obvious. If Trump were eliminated from competition, that's not how we should want to win. The way we want to win elections in this country, the way I want to win is by persuading the voters that I'm the right person to take the America first agenda to the next level. That's what it means to live in a constitutional republic. 
And I'll be really honest with you. I would rather speak truth at every step of the way and lose an election rather than to win by playing a careful game of political snakes and ladders. I think that might actually be the winning strategy. That's my sense from traveling this country. Mm -hmm. But that's for the people to decide, not me. President Trump can speak for himself. He doesn't need... And not to belittle what you did today, but he can speak for himself. And I talked to people over the weekend and they said, it's about God, family, country, not me, me, me. That's right. So, And I'm not speaking for Trump is the whole point. I'm speaking for the people of this country because Trump can speak for himself. So talk to the people and the small businesses, the two thirds of them or nearly two thirds of them of small business owners feel like they might have to close up shop as a result of the Biden economy. Day one, what do you do? The good news is these are solvable problems. You want to deliver economic growth in this country? Simple. Unlock American energy. Drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Those are bad words in the Biden administration. I'll say them out loud and deliver it. The second thing, Dag, is you put people back to work. We are now paying people to stay at home. Ask any of those small business owners, what's the number one obstacle to growth in the country right now? It's It's hiring people to do work because government government is paying them to stay at home. Government got in the way to pay them to stay at home. And the third element is government regulations. So those three things combined with reform of the Federal Reserve, I favor a single mandate, focus on stabilizing the U.S. dollar. Do that handful of things. I think we're back at four, five plus percent GDP growth. We're going to grow at less than one percent this year. People tend to be more proud of a country where they're making more money. And so, yes, I believe in national pride. One of the ways we get there is by restoring economic growth. So get rid of the dual mandate, not full employment, just economic growth, just a stable dollar. Stable dollar. Stabilize the U.S. dollar. That's how you grow the economy. I couldn't agree more. I I was on Fox and Friends this weekend, and they said, if not Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, what guy is the one that's going to rise through the ranks? And my, my take was... A clear, bold message from Vivek Ramaswamy. I think you've done remarkable on the campaign trail. I know how hard it is, and I don't know anyone is speaking as clearly as you are. So I'm I'm impressed. We're getting warmed up. up. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, guys. Vivek Ramaswamy, thanks for joining us. If you go to Versailles down in Miami, you get the guava pastry. (laughs) That was was a moment. I have yet to go. Guava pastry. I'm on it. Good tip. Vivek, it's great to see you. Dagan's a, a Florida property owner. I am not yet. Okay. Yes, I am. <laughs> you are. I would All live right. there if I could. All right. The one million dollar kidnapping scam. Wow. A mom tricked into believing her daughter was taken. And she says it was done through AI. Through-